All right, recording has been restarted. Let's just keep going. Um, dun, 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 dun. So what did we do? I guess I should probably go back here um, and just context switch back to the resolver from last Friday and just make sure that all those types that we expect to be there are now associated properly with the um, with the various declarations and so on. So maybe these are not the best candidates for that. So let's take something with type inference. I mean, even this is it, even this works, I guess. Um, Let's go digging. Oh, global sims is what it's called now. All right, let's see here. Uh, U simvar has an associated type, which is the union type, so that looks right. Um, let's also test if we go look at the experience Expression. So this was a var. So if we go down here, and the type in this case means it's an implicit. There's is an implicit declaration. That, I mean, it has inferred type. So this thing, yeah, this thing has associated that. So let's just say that's good, um, and that should be handled uniformly for all the different declarations. Uh, actually, let me also just verify that we have a backlink to the symbol now. So if you go look at this guy, there should be a sim. There should be a sim that points right back up. Yep. All right. Um, I think that's enough to get going with the generator. So if we have, um, let's start with variable declarations. All right, um, so these are like decal var, and I guess, let's see. Um, oh, actually, before we do that, let's 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 do something called uh, gen four decals, which just uh, generates all the four declarations. And for now, I'm not for, for now. I'm just going to use the global list of symbols, this ordered sims thing. Um, although actually it doesn't really matter for this, so we can just use that. And maybe that's better because it doesn't imply that there's any particular order uh, that we need here, which would be saying too much. Um, and so let us, um, depending, for some of them we don't generate anything, but if something is a struct or a union or we're not we're skipping enums for now i guess struct union or function we're going to forward declare it um i guess some symbols don't really maybe we shouldn't really go over these um but there are some that don't have associated declarations, um, like the built-in symbols. We don't want to generate things for those. We assume that we assume those are available in C under the usual names. So um, if we have a struct or we have a union or we have a function, we want to do some stuff. So in this case, type up struct. Something like this. Um, and now we actually get to use our 
our crazy banana cakes C declaration generator. So I think in this case, uh, we will do, um, we'll just do this. So we'll do, what do we call it? Type to C decal. Um, and the thing we're going to pass in is the sim type because it should be resolved by the time we call this. Um, the sim type, and then I guess just the sim name. Different cons qualifier. Do we require? Okay, yeah, that's wrong. Um, okay, so that compiles. Let's just put this for now. Um, so we could at least test that, I guess. All right. Um, so what's some good code here? I'm going to just replicate some of this stuff over there just because I want to have consistent, like I, I just want to have everything in one file. Um, which will probably change later, but for now this is convenient. I'll just make sure that doesn't run first. Um, this should probably be in a standard function. I don't know, uh, init global sims or something. Um, all right, and what do we do down here? I think all of this should be actually, let's create a new top level thing, which is like um. Parse decals. Um, while not as token EOF, um, parse decal. I guess we need some kind of type to go along with that, like. Um, I'll just call it a decal set. Uh, we're going to use a stretchy buff as usual. <clears throat> Let's 
Does that look reasonable? I do believe so. All right. Uh, and so we should really have um, we should really factor some of this stuff out, like parse file or so. What did I actually call this? Parse decals. Uh, or parse file. It's probably the right name for that. Um, let's see here. Okay. Um, and I won't refactor this code to use it right now because it's assuming it's an array of things rather than whatever. Um, but the new stuff where we copy this over, we will use that. Um, and so something like this. I don't know if I like that name decal set because it's too much like a, um, yeah, whatever. Um, let's see. So this was like parse file, uh, init stream code parse file. As long as the token is not EOF, parse it. So if that is the case, Okay, so parse that stuff as expected, but why? Oh, it's because that means something different, which is probably not a good idea now I think about it. EOF is minus one, right? And C. Yeah. Oh, it is what it is. So be careful about that. Um, Alrighty, so now we have a set of these guys, and I guess the resolver should basically do something along these lines. Uh, resolve decal set, I mean, Some global decal. This is called like this. So this just goes through and does everything. Um, so we should probably have, I don't know if this is the right name either. There should probably be something like this. These names are definitely not or concepts are not quite final, but um, if we then do this, we should be able to get rid of that. All right. So we parse this, and we can then do, we can even do this, I think it's fine. 
Um, and then finalize sims. Let's just make sure that all works. Okay. And what do we then do? So now everything should just be good to go. So there should only be one union type here. And that is, yep, enter pointer. Oh. Okay. And I guess let's just print that at the end. Okay. Type def union in pointer for so that looks reasonable. Um, let's start moving some of the vector code over. Maybe one of these. Oops. Let's move this over. So let's see, so now there should be, okay, that didn't parse. Oh, I guess that was there for a reason. Um, okay, so we forward declared both the vector and this thing, and we even did the function, but the function stuff did not, Need to do this. Also, line break. Okay, let's move over these others. Yeah, that all looks right. <clears throat> um, so I, th I mean, we could obviously, well, maybe we should. Let's do something crazier, like f. Um, let's do one of these from up here. So what was that? It's a function that returns. Um, an array of functions. And these are function pointers because func always denotes a function pointer type-wise here. Um, I guess this is going to fail type. No, I don't check control flow right now. So that should work. So let's look at this bad boy here. I think that's right. It's going to complain about the usual stuff. But other than that, yeah. Let's just delete that since it's not going to be accepted by the C compiler anyway. All right. Um, so I think that does it for four declarations. Then we have to do the rest of them. And
well. Let's see, if there's no decal, then we just return. Um, so if we have a var, this is already a little bit interesting. Um, so what are we going to do? We're going to basically, um, let's ignore the initializer for now just to generate the rest of it. So type to cdecl sim type sim name. Um, and these are going to, this stuff is going to get handled in uh, the ordering, not the, or the resolved order. So it's going to be something like this. Um, gen sim ordered sims. We should probably just have something called gen all. I'm so bad about this. This is one of those things I don't quite understand why they didn't remove somewhere between K and R and, and the current versions of C. All right, so gen four decals, gen ordered sims. Um, so let's see what this does, if anything. That looks right, except for lack of new lines. Probably deserves. Let's just put this in there. That looks correct. All right. Um, let's do some of the easier cases first, like structs and unions, I guess. Um, All right, I have an idea. Let's create a function. And then just call it that, call it like that. And then uh, gen new line, which is going to first and foremost do this, and then using the unholy trick, let's say for per indentation.
So. Could also parse the new lines, but that seems. Yeah, so I should just do this. Even though at top level, this should really never be necessary, but it's kind of nice to also just do it like that, I guess. Less redundancy. Oh, actually, that's not true. Because that would generate new lines for all the cases. Let's just do it like that. Yeah, it's okay. Um, I guess I could also Should be this or that. Let's call it that. Um, okay. Even though this is like a one-liner, this kind of deserves to be put out. Um, what do you even call this? Gen. I don't know. Is it a var decal or is it? Yeah. Come up with a better name. I don't want to factor it out yet. Um, gen of. Oh yeah, and in here we definitely want to do some. Uh, some indentation. Type two C decal, decal, aggregate. Oh, and that's actually not the right thing. It should be. Um, should be the type, uh, because this is the now we're doing semantics. So it should be this. I'm trying to remember what is this called? Fields. Okay, so it is called the same sort of thing. Um, fields dot type.
Let's see what, what blows up now. So the first level, right, that kind of makes sense, or it makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, you know what, this should just be internalized, definitely. So this just turns into gen aggregate. Okay, that's kind of interesting. When the last item, I mean, that's actually really silly. The last item that does this also does the indentation for the next line, which kind of breaks the whole scheme. It's pretty nasty. Um, maybe this is not the right place to do it. I mean, the obvious way to change it is to do it like this. Um, and we just, which is, I think, fine, but then we just have to make sure we interpret that correctly. Like, it should probably be renamed then. Okay, let's just make sure. Okay, just make sure these probably need to be rejiggered a little bit. Um, This is also a little bit weird because it means that now genline by itself will create a bunch of indented crap that doesn't do anything. Let's just leave that for now, clean it up later. All right. Um, Let's not over, over space it. Um, all right. I mean, that looks reasonable. Um, so what kind of declarations were, was that? Um, structs unions, var declarations. Let's skip consts for now. Um, I guess the interesting thing is expressions. Maybe. Because we have quite a bunch of those.
Casts are interesting um, because we can use our type machinery for that. And for our, I should mention, for our expression generation, at least in our first pass, we're going to over parenthesize everything. Later, we can be presidents and associativity aware, so it looks more idiomatic and flat. But uh, for now, this is probably the way to do it. Um, and so this would be type to C decal. Hmm. I guess that means I'm just realizing as I'm writing this that we need to because size of the difference let's see here um size of type these type specs we could re-resolve them but then we would have to replicate the whole resolver so um, again let's do something like this and then in the resolver resolve type spec And um, then if we get this far, of course we have to return it, but then we're also going to and actually we should assert that there's nothing already set and we should do the same for actually that's an interesting thing. Yeah, I don't think we should ever end up redundantly doing this, but um, in case there's legitimate reasons to call the resolve the same type pick multiple times, we could also use this as the cache. Let's just finish this stuff. Make sure it didn't break the whole world. Okay, so that does seem to. Is that because? Um, Okay, let's look at that again. Let's 
So okay, so type spec name. I guess be because that occurs, yeah, repeatedly in that specific form, which is maybe a little bit unintended. Um, Okay, let's put it this way. Either like that. Okay, same kind of deal there. Now I'm curious to see what exactly Um, so that was a roundabout way. So now type spec should have annotated types once they've been resolved, um, which means when we're doing a cast, for example, just put that here for now. Uh, when we're doing a cast, we should be able to type to C decal expression cast. Some of these should probably be renamed to type spec rather than type now that there's actual types in the structures, but so now it's a little bit repetitive. And this should be an empty string. And Um, I guess we recursively generate okay for calls I think um, Exper This is about as tight as anything binds, so maybe we don't really need to parenthesize it, but let's just be super paranoid and do it anyway. Um, Now let's make the rule that you don't yourself, you don't parenthesize yourself. Someone from the outside will parenthesize you if you need to be. So this is fine. Um, presumably that's it here. So it's called. Okay, this one is a little more interesting. 
So for compound literals, we have something like this. Um, and this should be, I guess, type to C decal. And interesting. And I guess this is the inferred type of the expression rather than the, because it need not be declared, but it must be inferable if we've gotten this far because then the resolver didn't error out. So compound, compound, there's a type, but we can't rely on this being useful because it may be null and then fields, all right. Um, and this is an empty string again. So I guess there's a couple of cases depending on let's see here. If it's a name, then we have to do that. Um No, I guess we have to do, yeah. We surround this thing. What's this thing called? Compound field. There's a kind name index and then an init. Um, right, these are value types. Does that look reasonable? And then for all except the first, you want to say if this is not equal to zero, something like that. Let me, I think we can handle the unary case pretty easily um, because we can use the fact that our token kind names are the same as in C. And again, we're going to parenthesize aggressively. I guess maybe we'll do it like this. Let me think. We have to do it outside. Like that. Um, for binary, or something like this. Um,
actually. So, oh, so that's the size of, okay, so the size of type. So we have to Okay, this is interesting. So to name the type, I guess that is right, okay. Just trying to think about whether there's some weirdness here, but I don't think so. <clears throat> Size of type, type. Um, let's put that in. All right. Um, Actually, before we write that, let's write the rest so we can do a whole function at a time. Actually, that's not, let's not do that. Let's do initializers. So if we go back to gen, what was it? Um, what was that function called right here? Um, there's actually two cases. If, um, let's see, if the decal has, what is it, uh, decal kind, let's go and look at that. So if it has, see var, has an optional type, um, so there's actually two cases. If there's an explicit type, we get it from there, otherwise we have to get it from expr. So if, no, I guess we can always get it for the sim type in either case. We have to discriminate based on whether there's an expression or not. If there is, then we'll do this. In either case, we will finish. Um, let's see if that does anything. I don't think we have. All right, holy cow, that looks reasonable. Let me just make like a dummy file over here somewhere. Did we lose all the four declarations? Oh, right. Yeah, we don't check for whether certain things are con true, true constant initializers in the C sense. But other than that, this is good. Um, but I mean, we can exclude these for now. Maybe put them inside a function. All right, disconnect it again.
<clears throat> All right, what was I doing? I'm waiting for things to reconnect. Let's see here. Still not reconnecting. Pretty annoying. This might be a semi longer term network outage. I'm just going to go to the bathroom while waiting for things to reconnect. See if I can reconnect now. <clears throat> All right, looks like it's reconnecting. It just gave me a chance to go to the bathroom as well. So, uh, okie dokie. Okay, where did we left off? Leave off. Uh, I moved these. I didn't really do anything other than move these things inside a function so that they can actually be legal C once they're eventually generated. Um, let's see where we got to. Looks good to me. All right. So where were we? That was for for Deckle vars. Um, we need to do something for type defs. I think type defs are going to be simple because we reuse our existing machinery or this existing function. Um, so there's some type def here.
actually let's do const for now. So enum and then gen expression sim I guess decal const decal can't remember what this thing is called uh const decal expr all right is just for integer constants for now. I'm going to do floats later. Um, let's maybe take some of this crazy stuff we had before. Uh, P, P, where is P? Oh yeah, let's do some out of order shenanigans. These are not illegal top level constant initializer expressions. Um, okay, let's take this over at least to start with. some out of order craziness going on here so let's see what that does this is ugly but i think it's legal let's just paste this in this whole pasting stuff is obviously, once I get sufficiently annoyed at it, I'm going to, a lot of extra line spaces. Once I get sufficiently annoyed, I'm going to do something about it. Why did it insert all this extra junk? Where did that come from? Okay, so that's legal C, apparently. They want to figure out where are those extra. Extra things came in from. Um, So that's after this. It must be for those, right? Um, yeah, we're doing this probably not the right place to do it. Um, okay, looks much better. Actually, there's some stuff that's wrong here, which is worrisome. I hadn't thought about that. So by the time we're dealing with, interesting, when I'm generating the types, the problem is I've already constant expanded. I've already resolved the types, in particular the, you know, the, 
the type of this A field has been resolved to an array of nine things, but I don't want to emit the nine. I want to emit the the actual syntactic, you know, in the original source code, it was n. So that's really annoying. I hadn't thought, I thought my approach would handle that. Um, I mean, I can change the way I'm doing. The problem is, in some cases, interesting. In some cases, I don't really know what the original type spec was. Like when you're doing um, things like type inference, you're propagating types, not type specs. So at least for that case, I can't really do it that way. Um, which is a problem. So for now, I can handle it by, hmm. Let me think about it. For now, let me do it two different ways. Um, in most of the cases, I, I could use a type spec instead because an explicit type spec is available. But then in other cases, I can't. Um, it's not necessarily the biggest deal in the world, but I have to think about the edge cases of that more. For now, let's just do it this way. Um, and so I think I'm going to use the type spec version everywhere I can, and only in cases where it has to be inferred, where I don't have the original syntactic declaration, will I use this function. Um, The other thing that's awkward about this is that I end up then now needing to generate, it's not really that bothersome, I suppose. It's a little bit hacky. But in the context of doing this for type spec arrays, I need to generate, I need to do a gen expert on the size. Um, Let me, this is a hack. Um, do it anyway. Um, gen expert <clears throat> type spec array size. Um, I want type spec to C deck all. Yeah, all of this junk. It's definitely awkward. I'm going to have to rethink this later. I just don't want to slow down right now. Um, so save this, set it to null so a new one will be allocated. OK, let's just do it that way. Um, Uh, 
punk funk. Okay, I call it args here, which I should probably rename. Um, type spec. Um, boom, boom, boom. Type spec. Args. Okay, let's just read over this. Um, so I should, I think most of the previous cases where I was using this, I should be using something else, like this, for example. Um, I have to think through the ramifications of this a bit more later, but um, let's see, for decal funk, Bunch of params, a return type. All right. So there's no decal spec as a whole for that function type. Maybe I'll just create that right there. in order to have reuse. Um, actually, let, let's handle other cases right now just to verify it works, like the var case. Um, So the int declaration should be using the type spec. So that does look right. Um, if I have also p, I guess p p p. Yeah, that looks right. Um, type to c dot goal. You know, the way that really handles a lot of these cases is if you can backlink, if you don't, if types are not uniqueified and you backlink all the types to the, the AST nodes, then you could use those. And you just have to make sure those propagate correctly. But we have to think about that after. But for now, I just want to keep going. Um, all right, all right. So for aggregate, yeah. So this is definitely a case where you want to use, um, I guess, not really the type now. So we want to move back to the declaration. This feels icky, but. Oh yeah, I wasn't doing that comparison correctly. So someone was mentioning that earlier. Now I know what they had in mind. Um, I can also use the actual declaration name. Uh, 
aggregate item. probably have their names harmonized. Um, oh yeah, that's another annoying case. If you have a list of them, Just handle the n equals one case. Um, only one field allowed per aggregate item dot call. Um, all right. And then we want to do type spec, blah, 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 item type. And actually, that won't even work for this. So let's split these up. Still works. <clears throat> you know, the, the the thing I'm thinking about here is, I'm sure you know, if you have like two pointers, they have to be declared like this. And so everything except the base part is repeated for each item. But our function right now is not really set up to handle that, I think. So I'm not sure. Well, I can think of ways of making it work, but I don't want to digress on that right now. So let's see. So it looked like that worked. OK, let's say definitely got hit. Like that. So this one is interesting. Um, if compound type This whole bifurcation is definitely indicative of problems, even though I think this will work. Well, we're not really hitting it right now, I suppose. Um, let's try putting this back up just to test that. So this right hand side here should use that. If I use, um, let's see, if I instead write it like this, int or putter, I should use the different path. Yep, so it looks the same, which is what it should. Um, all right. 
Oh, I guess the important case was actually this end n thing. Right, so you can see that this actually has the n in the square brackets rather than 9. Yeah, that was the main issue. Okay. All right, let's move that out again. Um, put it to give myself what to do. Let's do statements so we can kind of quote unquote be done, which is totally not done, but at least get coverage of that stuff. Um, Let's put this in. Um, return, and then depending on whether I guess depending on whether there's an expression or not. Um, something like that. Actually, let's put that into a function. Um,
Hmm. I guess I don't really want this to be on a line of its own, right? Um, so that we can use it like that. Which does mean I think we need to do this. Um, because then when we call it, we can sort of control where it starts printing. So we need to do this. And then if statement else block statements. Change statement block. Statement if statement. Something like that. I guess the same is true here. You don't want to generate the final new line. Uh, or the. No, you do want to generate that because it's the prefix new line. Um, this is wrong. Let me think about that. Gen simple statement. I don't want to. I don't want to insert the final. Okay.
sorry, I, I realized I'm being really quiet. I'm just trying to focus. Um, all right. So a sign is also, okay, so these three cases are the simple statements. Um, in it, um, let's see, uh, in it. Dot expression type Um, token kind name Okay, let me just think about it. So one thing I'm realizing is that this thing is not generating indentation before it, neither is it generating a terminating semicolon, which is actually what I want because that way I can use it in in four clauses. Um, but it does mean that I need to, um, I think I need to do this down here. And then finally, let's see here, uh, for functions, mm, okay, let's just do it. Okay, so we're not going to, I think we could, but we're not going to reuse, um, well, so we have a function declaration, and so um, let's see, type spec to cdecl. Decal funk. Let's see if I call this stuff. Ret type. Call 
Um, um, and then for each of these, we are going to Um, params dot yes, let's just call this Chances this is going to work, but zero, but let's see. Oops. All right. Um, So we'll let the special case it here, but it should probably be handled inside that thing. Okay. That's surprisingly close to something reasonable. It should actually not be indented. At least not the way I prefer to do stuff. Okay, so where's the switches? The switches look reasonable. Switch case. Switch, switch, switch. Yeah, reasonable. Um, no terminating, no terminating thing. Well, actually, that's not right. It needs to be indented. Yep, looks correct. Um, for, well, the, the switch looked correct. Let's look at the ifs. Those have weird indentation. Um, so there's a new line after this. Yeah, that's not right. Looks not totally crazy, to be honest. Um, let's see, why did that happen? Let's see if I have some more code we can bring over. Some of this code was never intended to be usable, but maybe let's write um, let's do it like this, and then write funk. Uh, 
uh, stacked rack. Um, for a result, result is one, and then That looks pretty reasonable. Oh, someone's saying. Sorry, I just saw someone say bug. I think someone was asking how long we've been doing this. We only really started on the compiler. Like this is the beginning of week three for the compiler. Week one, we didn't work on the compiler at all. So really only two weeks so far. And uh, I kind of didn't get to work much on it end of last week. So maybe one and a half weeks of actual work. Let's see if this compiles. Oh, so it's interesting that it treats this. Oh, yeah, that's definitely busted. What happened there? Oh, this. I see. I, I see. So this doesn't handle. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I get what's going on there. Of course. So. So first off, this is missing, but second off, uh, fifth equal func num params is zero, then we have to uh, do something like that. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to complain about those pointers, right? Okay, this is still there. I could have sworn, wasn't that fixed in the last paste? Yeah, it was. Okay. Right. So this is for declaring them in the wrong way. Um, let's see, gent func decal.
Okay. Let's generate some some code in here to shut that up. Um, All right, we don't have implicit casts, so we have to add that in the code. So this is fine, but for now we would have to do this, which is also a good opportunity to test that code, which seems to work. Oh, we have we clipped off the top. I'm going to automate this, and so I guess officially annoyed at it. But for now, it's nice to have it in the same file. Yay! So that all type checks. Um, Let's call the function just for fun. Actually, let's not call the. Let, let, let's do something else. Let's call. Um, let's call a function called example test, which calls fact rec of ten. And then we're going to just have a for declaration there. It's the example test. Actually, let's look. Bootstrap it first. Unresolved external blah blah blah. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. Yeah, that looks reasonable. Um all right. That was pretty good. Obviously, this is not really cause for celebration or anything, but I mean, it's at least doing something end to end, even if it's pretty basic. Let me think about what made me feel uncomfortable. I think the biggest thing is I need to figure out the whole notion of type versus type spec. It seems like there are cases where you cannot really get at the original type spec. Well, 
maybe you can as long as as long as type inference which is where those things are propagated as long as it never creates new types but just propagates existing types then in theory as long as the types know about their original defining type spec you should be able to get back to there even through a chain of type inference and type, type propagation so maybe that's the thing I should do but now I'm pretty I guess I'm should take a break how long have we been going Um, I guess since eight, so that's three and a half hours. All right, I think that's good enough for me. Uh, I'll take a break and I will think, I will think about how to handle the type versus type spec stuff. I think I have an idea for how to do it now, so it shouldn't it shouldn't be as bad as I thought it would be. Um, I think it does mean we need to change how we do our type uniquing because we can't. I was already thinking about this. Another case that comes up is the way we're doing type defs right now. Um, if you go and look at resolve, or are we not even, maybe we're not properly handling it anywhere, which would be bad. Well, I mean, it's very easy to handle, but anyway, the, the way I was planning on handling type defs, I thought I really, I had already done that. Guess not. Um, but the way I was thinking of handling type defs was essentially just, you know, things when you construct the, the type, you just to sort of, you know, if a type, if a name resolves to something, you just sort of forward the name to the resolved type. But the problem with that is you lose, you know, in this, if you use that to generate C code, you lose the, um, you, you end up sort of flattening the, the type def chain, which is not what you want. You want to preserve those. So this would help that too. But once you do that, you lose uniquing because a type, you know, if you type def foo to int, right now we were expecting uh, the type for foo and the type for int to be identical in memory. We're using this interning trick. I don't think that will work once we start doing those things. If we want to maintain their original identity, um, one way to handle that is to you know, have a two-part object essentially, like one that contains this extra data and then the inner part that has the unique stuff. And that way the top level types can be distinct so they can have different names or other associated data, but they will have an internal sort of a, a real reduced type that is truly the canonical representation of that type. So maybe that's really all we need to do, but it, it requires some changes in the resolver, but I hope nothing major. Um, let me see what people are saying. Yeah, I'll I'll check it in. Actually, let me check uh, test it on Linux uh, first. Make sure I don't check in any other junk. Okay. Um. Okay, that's a lot of stuff. Let me fix these. Um, let's see. Return discards const qualifier. Yeah, okay. So it's just saying that neither of the two parts of this if or this ternary are. Uh, Oh, I see. Okay, gotcha. Um, not handled. Okay, I should probably. Um, then the same here. What was it saying? Uh, 
unused variable. Yeah. Just gonna do this for now. It's not. It, it was really only scaffolding. Uh, we we should add some asserts for it later, but I don't want to do that before checking in. Variable u2 set but not used. So this is the case of it being too smart, I think. Well, I shouldn't. I don't want to check this in anyway. Or maybe I'll check it in with but with a if zero. Yeah, people can do that themselves. It's not really interesting. It was just to verify that it actually worked. Um, all right. Really? Did I not merge that? Eh. I want to deal with whatever that was. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Okay, I just didn't check that in, I guess. Interesting. Did that really not get checked in? Uh, why are there two separate? So are those different branches? Uh, what's the thing I'm thinking of? Am I not in the right directory? Yeah, I'm, someone's asking if I'm uh, git pulling to uh, whistle, which is what I'm doing. I have no idea why that git amend didn't take. My brain is too fried to figure out what Git is doing right now. <clears throat> so that clearly didn't get pushed. Then what the hell did get pushed? Okay, let's do, rather than using Git, git amend, I probably shouldn't use Git reset when I'm feeling like, feeling tired. Let's see here. And then we should definitely do that because okay that works <clears throat> let's 
let's push 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 yeah i'm pushing now i, I was too tired i was screwing up my my gits oh are you kidding me did i screw that up oh no uh but okay Wait, where is that? Oh, here we go. Um, All right, it should be up now. Is there a bite? The thing about git git reset is as long as you're not using git reset hard and you're using it not on a hash rather than on specific files, it's it's pretty hard to shoot yourself in the foot. Um, so even in my brain fried state, I wasn't too okay. But anyway, it should be up now. All right. Um, anyway, that's it for today. Um, obviously, the, this code is not particularly noteworthy. I mean, it's kind of just doing a bunch of string stuff. Um, but at least we have some kind of end-to-end -end workflow now. And uh, the thing I will be thinking about is some of the type spec versus type stuff, which probably requires reorganizing the type data structures a little bit. Um, and just, I guess, handling some of the other cases like enums that are still barely supported and thinking about, I think right now we only handle integer constants, so we need to handle float constants. So anyway, this is very much just the the starting, uh, the, the initial pass on this stuff. But uh, anyway, we got something going end to end at least, so that's kind of cool. All right. Uh, thanks for hanging out, and uh, I'll go get my lunch now. See you guys later.